Hey, good morning, Impact Church. What is going on? It is Sunday. We are in the house of the Lord, wherever that may be, in your living room, bedroom, wherever that is. We get to praise the Lord today. It is Sunday, and we get to come together as a fellowship. So we are going to go into a time of worship. Uh, Psalm 33, verse 1 says, Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. So let's praise him with our voices. Give him the day, because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen and amen. God of creation there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark and flashed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so will I I can see your heart in everything you made Every burning star, a single fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise. You don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see you heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. If your everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all your praises falls shy, then I will sing up in a hundred billion times. Of 
salvation. You chased down my heart through all of my failures and pride. On the hill you created, the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die. As you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly choose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious child, the one you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount? To your desire. You're the one who never leaves the one behind. How good is God? So good. good to us. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for being by our sides and Lord just touch our hearts. Let us focus on your goodness and who you are. I love you Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I have held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see all the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing all the goodness of God I love your voice darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God and oh my Of the goodness of 
God, you are so, so good, and your love, you just come running after us. It is amazing how much you love us. Thank you, for Katie, for uh, bringing us into that time of worship, and it's just so powerful. I texted you earlier, and um, I just said those, your words, your voice, the love that God has for us just brought uh, chills to my spine, and... Uh, he runs after us. He's such a good, good father. And I just thank you again, Katie, for, for uh, leading us in that time of worship. So uh, let's get let's start moving forward. We, we don't just uh, worship the Lord with our voices at impact. We believe in tithes and offerings, and, and we believe in honoring the Lord with them. So that we have a couple different ways to give at impact. You can mail in a giving envelope or any envelope to our P.O. Box at 155 Maywood, uh, <clears throat> Illinois, 60153. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you can donate to impact-church-maywood.org. That is the fastest and uh, I think safest way to, to give. You can also 
uh, just call us up and say, hey, we got a donation. I was out there Saturday yesterday, and people were calling me and saying, hey, come pick up our donations. So many different ways to give. There's some, uh, some, some scriptures I want to talk about before we do give. And in Leviticus 27 and 30 says, a tenth of the produce of the land, whether grain or fruit, is the Lord's, and it's holy. And Proverbs 3, 9 says, Hon honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. And see, what, what, what they're telling us is that all of this, all that we have is God's. Uh, none of us, none of it is ours. It all came from him and it all goes back to him eventually. So we are supposed to give from our, the first fruits, meaning the first of, of what we have. And, and, and in this time and, and day and age, it, that's money that we get paid uh, through jobs or services that we do. So we're supposed to give him our first. So that's what we're going to do. Raise up your offerings right now. And, and, and I always tell you, uh, listen to the Lord as you give. Give from an open heart. Not a, a, not an obligation to have to give, but a, be able to give to him freely uh, what, what he is telling you to give. So, Father God, we just raise up our offerings right now to you, Father. We love you. We thank you we, uh, for the blessings, big and small, that you give us throughout the days and the weeks and the months, Lord. Thank you for over these last quarantine months that we have been able to give back to you, Father God. Be, why? Because you are so good and so faithful that you have provided food and shelter and, and homes and, and cars and, and just everything that we need, Father God. Just says, seek your kingdom first and everything else will fall into place. So, Lord, we put our trust in you today, right now, with our first fruits of the week, Father God. Bless these offerings that are being given. Bless the people that are giving them, Father. Let us, as Impact Church, be a blessing to others. B-A-B, -A -B, be a blessing to others. Through these tithes and offerings, Father God, let us be good stewards to help your widows and orphans and the fatherless, Father God. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. So, uh, yeah, like you said, go ahead and give uh, any any of those three ways that you, you feel comfortable with. We love you and thank you for it. Real quick, uh, we have our daily prayer call, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, 7 a.m. and 9 p.m., we rise and pray with with God. We start our day with God and we end our day with God. So join us at 425-436-6337. Access code is 720-221 and the hashtag. So that's uh, every day. The only time we don't do it is Sunday morning. So, fa uh, so our daily prayer family nights is back this Friday. I'm sorry they've been canceled for the last couple of weeks. Uh, our family's been uh, having our own family time. Uh, so we've been on a short little vacation. So online services, hey, this is the last week. I got We got some big news. So today's service and next week's service will be online. But we are regathering again uh, Sunday, June 12th at 1030 at the Park District. We will be gathering again at the Park District July 12th, uh, right after the holiday. So be prepared. I'm sending out a letter actually right after this, and I'm putting it in the mail, explaining the process of what we need to do in order to regather. So there are going to be um, some stipulations from the, uh, <clears throat> um, from the Park District as well as um, health and safety department. So, but I'm excited to be back with you guys in person. And uh, as soon as you guys get the letter, please read through it. I will put out an email blast uh, that way to probably text messages and stuff. So the more we communicate about this, the more um, precaution and we'll, we'll just play it safe. All right, we'll put it in God's hands. And I, last week was Father's Day. And I want to show you guys a short little video of what we we got our, our the, the fathers and the men of the church. So it's a cute little video, real quick.
hey vince thank you for making that video will and and rav thank you for going out and delivering those masks um it was a uh, I think a pretty cool little treat to give to the guy. So thank you for your assistance and your help with that. Hey, today I'm excited. We are back with the greatness of Jesus and our series. We are in part three and today um, we're going to talk about love. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Tracy and I, we, we went to go see uh, grandma and papa uh, last week and actually the girls are still out there to, they'll be coming back today so please keep them in your prayers as they drive through i think the weather is going to be a little uh stormy i think uh, on the way back so just keep them in your prayers but as we were out there um they 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 live by a lake and and while we we're uh, visiting them i got to spend a lot of time fishing um, a, a new hobby that i have picked up uh playing with the girls watching and, I, and just kind of watching just how peaceful God's creation can be. Um, being on a lake almost every day, I got to just sit and take in his beauty and how much he, he loves us. And, and you know, if you realize, uh, at one point, his creation was totally perfect. And it was unblemished by by evil or by, by, um, by sin at all. And... And it, it, like you said, at one point, it was just perfect and beautiful. And I got to spend time in that nature uh, this week, last week, watching how, how, how that must have looked in, in his eyes at, at first. And it, it was. It was perfect in his eyes. And, and he loved us so much that he made man, he made me and woman, you got, and the women out there, in his image to watch over and to take care of it. And that was good for a little while, right? The Bible says that God walked with them and he hung out with them and he had uh, a relationship with them, speaking with them. And, and it was good for a while, right? But then sin came into the world and, and that's when hate and greed and anger and jealousy, sin, came into the world. And we see that firsthand in Cain and Abel in the first murder. And Cain was jealous of Abel, and he kills him because God blessed Abel, and and you know jealousy came into place, rage, oppression, greed, all these things that weren't meant to be here. And you're probably wondering, wow, Pastor Anthony, you just came back from vacation, from spending time in in God's country, and and you're talking about you know hate, greed and uh, murder and all these things that what kind of vacation did i had I, it was wonderful uh the reason i'm talking about this is because being on vacation and looking at what god's creation can be and what it's supposed to be and reading and listening to the holy spirit it brought me and led me to jesus and the teachings that he teaches us in matthew 22 uh, chapter 22 verses 37 to 39 so i want you to go to you get your bible out your app out, whatever, you version, and, and, and open it up to Matthew 22, verses 37 and 39. What, before I get in, let's pray. Father God, open up our hearts, our minds, our, 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 our spirits to your words tonight, Father God. Just transform the way we think, the way we love, the way we treat people, the way it was meant to be, to be in a perfect world, knowing that the sin is right around the corner. It's, it's creeping like a lion to grab us, Father God. Protect us. Keep us safe under your wings and your arms and your and your love, Father God, to, to guide us and to lead us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Let these words today transform somebody's heart and spirit and soul to, to, to knowing who you are and how much you just love us, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said amen, 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 amen. All right, so right before we get started, I want to I want you guys to realize what's happening. Jesus is kind of asked a question. It's kind of a trick question by one of the leaders of that time and a religious expert, if you want to say. And the teacher, he goes, "Teacher, which is the most important commandment of the laws of Moses?" And this is what Jesus answers him. He says, "Jesus replied, "You must love the Lord." your God with all your heart, all your soul, 
all your might. And this is the first and greatest commandment, he says. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. See, both of these passages, they're from the Old Testament. I don't know if you guys realize this. So Deuteronomy 6.5 tells us it's the first commandment. Love the Lord with all your 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 uh with all your heart, your soul, and all your mind. It tells us that in Deuteronomy 6 5. Leviticus 19, under the law, verse 18, it says, This is where Jesus gets love your neighbor as yourself. So this is nothing new that Jesus is telling them. He's actually telling them something that the people of the time should already know. And they should be treating others this way. But and what Jesus teaches us. Is something that's just so profound, I think, and so missed by so many believers that it actually uh, it makes my heart kind of hurt at times because I think we missed the big picture of what Jesus is telling us. See, we live in such a screwed up world, don't we? Like I said earlier, it wasn't always screwed up. It was actually perfect at one time. But when sin came into the world, it brought about our desires, not God's desires anymore. It brought about our desires, our love for stuff instead of our love for people, for God's creation. Months ago, we started, uh, we, we all became quarantined, right? This COVID-19 um, pandemic, it quarantined a lot, all of us and we haven't been able to do the things that we wanted to do, right? Life got a little hard. It got different. It, it, it's probably never ever going to be the same after this, but it, it was, it's, it's hard, right? Not being able to see people on a daily basis, always having to be with the same people in the same house and the same, you had to learn, we had to learn a new way of life. And with this came a new motto for the world is we all are in this together. And then and, and we had TV shows and it was, uh, Facebook and Instagram, all these social medias trying to get people to be in all this together and working together to get through this pandemic. And it was, you know, after months of being in it together and, and doing life together, uh, you know, via Internet and stuff like that. Government said, okay, okay, let's loosen up the reins a little. And they gave us a little more freedom. They gave us freedom back, if, if, if that's what you want to call it. And again, because that's what we wanted, right? It might not be the best thing that they did, but that's what the, the public wanted. That's what we wanted. Um, some things happened, right? Uh, what happened right after that? A man. A man was murdered. And not just any man, a black man was murdered by a white police officer. And because of that action, it brought back years of hatred. It brought back years of anger. It brought back years of oppression. It brought back these feelings that have always been there since the beginning of time with Cain and Abel that have never been resolved. We saw a glimpse of what it could look like if we were all in this together. We were helping each other. We were trying to get people in the same mindset that, hey, we're in this together. We can get through this. We saw light. What was that light? Jesus' love for us. And we saw people coming together in places that we'd never be, be able to meet people all around the world because of something called the Internet. And, it, and, and it's going well, right? And then this happens. And by this one action, this evil action, it tries to extinguish the light that was coming back into the world. I'll never know what it's gonna, what it's like to be a black man. Why? Because I'm not black, right? And I, I, and we, and and we live in a predominantly white society, so I don't know what that would look like. Okay, but I do know what it's to. to I do know what it feels like to be looked at differently. Uh, I get mistaken all the time for being Spanish and Mexican and that people come up to me all the time. It happened yesterday, all day as we were giving out food. Um, people, the, the Spanish people that were coming to get food would speak to me in Spanish and I'd say, no, no Espanol. I'm Italian and I don't speak Italian either. So, uh, you know, but I get mistaken all the time for something that I'm not. And, you know, as I was growing up, 
I would get chased and harassed by police a lot. Um, most of the t- some of the times I deserved it. Other times I didn't. But even if I didn't deserve it, um, they were just kind of doing what they were supposed to do. But sometimes they were just doing it to harass us. And I, I get it. Um, and, you know, most of the time they, they were right in doing what they did. But there were times when they just did it to do it. And that doesn't make it right. And, and from this one murder, from this one death, brought back riots. It brought riots, right? It brought anger. It brought hatred toward people trying to serve others. See, none of us are perfect, right? None of us get it right every day. If that was the case, we would be in heaven with, with our maker, right? We are all flawed. And they don't always get it right, right? They, the, the people that serve us don't always get it right. Just like you and me. But they try for the most part, don't we? Every day I wake up trying my best to get my life right. And I hope that's what you do too. And then last week in Chicago, over 120 people of all races and creeds and colors and genders, from little kids to adults, were shot down in the, in, on a holiday weekend. And it saddened my heart to see this and to read about it. But I'm here to tell you today that we can defeat the devil. We can defeat the devil. We can defeat him and his evil schemes by what Jesus teaches us in Matthew right there. What we just read. See, the reason I'm talking to you today about this is because as believers, as Christ followers, as some, we are supposed to live in a different way, a different different society, God's way, God's society, okay? And, and and I think we're missing the main thing just like so many of us have before, just our, as, as our forefathers have. See, we need to learn from our mistakes and do what we need to do is to bring God back into our society, to bring God back first in all that we do. See, it says you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. See, Jesus didn't say to love the Lord a little. He didn't say that, did he? He says love the Lord with all your heart. He doesn't say just love him 99% of your being. He says all of your heart. All of your being. He doesn't say love me when it's convenient. He says love me all the time. See, that means that we need to put God first in every aspect of our lives. Very first thing we need to do. That's the first and foremost. That's the first commandment. Yes, I don't. We don't live under the law, but I I should still follow the law. Why? Because it's there. God wrote it for us, and He says this is what we need to do: love me, and I will love you. And it's, He says, "Love me in your heart," meaning that that's the way we have to love Him, and we are supposed to love others. It says, "Love us, love Him with all your spirit." That means. You need to always be focused on him, not on the desires of the evil one, which a lot of us have in place at times. We need to have the same spirit that Christ had, that Jesus has for us. And that spirit is for good and not evil. Amen? It's not for evil. It's for good. And our thoughts need to be aligned, it says, with God and God's will. And that means from the time we wake up, Till the time we put our heads on that pillow to go to rest. And then God bless that he gives us another day and wake up, wakes up tomorrow. And the next day, we are supposed to start that all over every day. Putting God first. Loving him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. I'm not going to keep preaching on that. But that's what Jesus is saying. What I want us to focus on is the second commandment that Jesus said was just as important. He says to love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> Sounds easy, right? 
That's easy. I love my neighbor. They're great people. Actually, my neighbors just moved out this morning, and I'm actually quite sad because they're very good people. Um, they, but they they moved out today. They bought a house, a different house, and um, they're on their way to moving out. But they're my neighbors. I love them. They're great people. Why is it so important to love your neighbor? Because when we love our neighbor, we are loving God himself. Why do I say that? Because God made us. He made each and every individual. Again, right before this, there, there was a slick leader of that day, and he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And, and he goes on to tell the, the story of the Good Samaritan. We all know the story, right? And the easy, quick answer to this question is basically what Jesus is saying is everyone. doesn't matter if they're good or bad or uh ugly or fat or funny looking uh, or whatever they are you are supposed to love them and and what he's telling us is that your next door neighbor who's not a believer you're supposed to love them the arabian family down to uh, four houses down from me i'm supposed to love the person uh, that you just said hi to yesterday at the store we're supposed to love the single black mother who's struggling in life right now down to, on the next block we're supposed to love. The lesbian couple that you know we're supposed to love. The Hispanic family that your children hang out with that from school we're supposed to love. The special needs friends that you have you're supposed to love. See, everyone is our neighbor. And we are to treat them with this love that Jesus had for us. And that's the one thing I truly believe that will overcome the devil and the darkness in the world. How do I know that? Because Christ beat the devil through love on the cross for us. And it wasn't just any love. It was a bold love that Christ had. And that's what I want to speak about today. This bold love that, that we're supposed to live by, that we're supposed to have inside of us that we're supposed to have for God and have for our neighbors. And that's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to apply that. And that's my goal is that we take this, this message today and you go apply it to the world. Why? Because this love is the one thing that is going to bring light back into this world. In order for us to do this, though, in order for us to understand what this love is and looks like, we have to go to Scripture. I can't go by worldly love and what that looks like. I have to go to scripture. And I have to figure out what this bold love is. And what it really looks like. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, I truly believe he nails it on the head in 1 Corinthians. It's called the love chapter, right? 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13. And we're going to go there today. I'm going to read it to you. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful, or proud, or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. L love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Amen to that, right? I know you guys have heard that passage probably a thousand times. And if that's the first time you've ever heard that passage, God bless you. I want you to go find the Bible. Go, get your Bible out. Not just today, but after service. I want you to read through this. All right. I, I, I want this to resonate into your soul, your spirit. Okay. Because like I said, we might have heard this a thousand times or the first time today. But I, you need it to be internalized. So in order to do that, we need to look at these words. We need to really ponder and think about what they say. And I'm going to go through them, but I want you to do it individually. Why? Because a relationship with God is an individual relationship. There's a corporate one, which is called church. But there's an individual relationship that you need to have with the Lord. And these, this passage about love can beat the devil's scheme. 
And he says, love is patient and kind. That means it's not hot tempered and it's not mean. At times I have a very bad temper and I admit it. And I and when I get that way and, and I get hot tempered and I lose my temper quickly, it, it, it breaks my heart and I, I, I try and I work on this daily. Why? Because patient, love is supposed to be patient. It's supposed to be kind. And yes, at times I am loving and patient and kind, but there's times that I'm not perfect. And that I have to work on that. Just probably like many of you watching today. It's okay as long as you know that you can change it because you can. Christ's love can change that inside of you. See, it says love is not jealous too. That means we should not <laughs> we should not cheer on uh, uh, on, then this means that we should actually cheer on other people's blessings, not like Cain with Abel. It's not jealous. When somebody gets blessed with something that you don't have, we're not supposed to covet it. We're not supposed to get jealous about it. We're supposed to cheer them on. God blessed them with that. That's awesome. There's not. There's nothing bad with that. That's a great thing. So love is not jealous. It should not be boastful, it says, or arrogant or rude. It's not, see, it's not always about you. My Tracy always tells me, it's not always about you, Anthony, me, myself, and I. And, and she's absolutely right. It should not be about what we have done for others, but it should be about what we can do for others. It's not about what we've done or what we've done for ourselves. It's about what we can do for others so they can boast about us. Proverbs 28, just I was just reading that before service in my devotionals, and it talks about that. Let other people boast about you. We're supposed to live humbly. We're, next, the next thing that it talks about, love is not proud. See, in Proverbs 16, 18, and 19, it says, Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. See, we're supposed to live humbly and not be puffed up. We're not supposed to be puffed up. We did an awesome job yesterday as a church and, and other people, other churches, Next Gen, God's Heritage, uh, Best, Best of Proviso and Firehouse Dreams yesterday, serving the community. And, I'm, and I am proud about it, that we've come together as a coalition to help serve the community. But I'm not puffed up about it. We can be proud, but there's a certain way to do it, and that's to be humble, knowing that God is in control first, and he gets the glory. See, we're not supposed to be puffed up. See, that's why our salvation is a gift, too. It's a gift from God. It's by grace we are saved, so we cannot take any credit for it. That's the beauty of a gift. It also says it does not demand it, demand its own ways. Mm. This means that we need to be flexible to other people's needs. This is hard. Why is this hard? Because we think that our ways are always the right ways, don't we? When scripture tells us that God's ways are not always our ways, and God's ways are, are the right ways. See, we need to be flexible to what the Spirit tells us, even if it's not what we want. Mm. It demands. Love does not demand its own ways. It goes on to say it's not irritable and it keeps no records of wrong. I, I don't know if Sarah's watching, but... Um, my baby girl, she's great with this, with Abby. Uh, you know, Abby t takes stuff and stuff like that from Sarah all the time and wants to do this and that. And Sarah is just so laid back and easy, easy going about things. And she keeps the peace between them two. She, uh, she loves on Abby all the time and kisses and hugs. She doesn't keep records of wrong. And I love that about her. She forgives quickly, and she makes sure everything's okay before we go and do something. She's And she learns this. She didn't learn this. Uh, or she did learn it by example, and she learned it from Mama. So, Mama, thank you for teaching her that, uh, that 
special quality of what love looks like. It says it does not rejoice about injustice either. Instead, it, that what that means is it, it seeks justice. Meaning instead of being part of the problem and causing injustice on others, it finds a way to help become the solution. See, we're supposed to be the solution to problems instead of being the problem, okay? It seeks God's justice. Ecclesiastes 3.17 says, In due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. And in Deuteronomy 32.35, it says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back. See, ju justice is God's, and he'll take care of it. He'll deal with it for us. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to love through the circumstances that we're going through. We're supposed to love with our actions and our words. And lastly, he says, love never gives up. See, we need to stand in our faith, knowing that God and that the love of Jesus that he had for us on the cross, it never, it will never give up on us. It, it, that his love will never lose, lose faith in us. That his love gives us hope. That in this hope that we make the right decision in every circumstance. And that decision is to love others as ourselves. See, Paul understood this. He understood what it, what it meant to love. He understood what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And what it really meant was uh, what he understood was on how that should look as, as, as believers to love. Why? Because love is the only thing that can beat the devil. That's my, kind of my second point, destroying evil with love. See, right before Paul writes about love in, in chapter 13, he says, if, he, he says in verses 1 through 3, If I could speak all languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I'd be nothing. And he goes on to say, if I gave everything I have to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about that. But if I don't love others, I have gained nothing. See, Paul understood it all starts with love. It doesn't matter if our actions, if there's no love behind them. If our words are empty, then there's no point in, in, in trying to love somebody. Our actions should resemble what love looks like. Our actions should be bold. Our actions should be bold love. See, bold love is God's weapon to, to de destroy the power of darkness. In Romans 12, uh, verses 9 through 21, I am not going to read these. This is your homework. Vince or whoever's posting in our comments today could read Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Read them today, read them tomorrow, read them the rest of the week. I want you to internalize what these words are saying. <clears throat> and I'm going to go through, through them really quick. Because this is what bold love looks like. Bold love is fervent in spirit and in service, strong and intense. Bold love is joyful, patient, prayerful, generous, hospitable. Bold love blesses persecutors, refusing revenge. Bold love is compassionate and humble. Bold love is peaceable. Bold love overcomes and destroys evil. I know I went through those fast. They're, they'll be in the comments, but I need you to go back this week and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and, and Romans. And I, I want you to, like I said, internalize this because bold love is God's weapon to, to destroy the power of darkness. See, we live in a day where we think that our, our, own, our only visible and viable way um, uh, against... Are, uh, 
against what's evil out there is to expose it. We think that our weapon is to expose it and, and, and attack it and legislate it. But those who advocate justice, like we've been seeing lately, with riots, destruction of people's properties, their businesses, boycotting certain businesses and uh, <clears throat> only shopping other ones and, and boycotting and, and complaining about our leadership as a way of getting what they want. That's what the world does. That's what the earthly human flesh of our bodies do. But that's not how ju God handles justice. Uh, he handles it uh, in ways that we can't even explain at times. See, when we do the, what, what I just mentioned, that actually causes more harm than good. Why do, why do I say that? It's because it makes people with uh, other views dig in their, their books and they, it makes them want to fight back. It makes them want to fight back. See, Paul, uh, what Paul and Jesus teach us is to rain coals down on people's head, heads. You, you've, it's a proverb. It says to rain, uh, to show love, to show compassion, to show kindness on the, onto the people, your enemies. And by doing this, it will rain coals on people's heads. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means uh, that if your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they're thirsty, give them water to drink. What, what this love that I'm talking about, this bold love, see, it destroys evil with empathy. It destroys evil with hostility. Ah, uh, I knew I was going to mess that word up. It, <laughs> it destroys evil with being uh, kind to them. Hospitability. Somebody say, type it for me. Being um, humble and kind to somebody. It means being, giving them something. Uh, this kind of love, it destroys evil by generously offering care to what is needed. So if you see somebody in need that's your enemy, give them, give it whatever they need. This kind of love is so powerful, so very powerful that we have from God. Not that we don't need to succumb to what the what the other person wants you to and how they treat you. See, when we are kind and compassionate and hospitable, yes, more or less. If we, if we act these, this way with them, it surprises them and it shames them who harms you and the harm they, that they cause to others. They're not ready for that kind of reaction. They're not ready to be loved like that. See, the, their profound surprise that their evil was not paid, repaid with evil, it opens their hearts to redemption. That's my last thought to it. Redeeming the heart. Redeeming the heart. And, and that's what it's really all about, redeeming the heart. Re redeeming the heart of the lost. That's what bold love can do. How do I know that? Because six, close to 16 years ago, that happened to me. God sent an angel into my life at a time that I didn't have uh, faith in him. I didn't have faith in pretty much anything except drugs and alcohol and my lifestyle. Again, I, like I said, it was me, myself, and I. And <clears throat> But he sent a red-headed little angel my way, who is now my wife. And she saw something inside of me. She saw my heart. And she saw how broken it was. And instead of condemning me for the way I lived and and, con and condemning my lifestyle and um, she showed me love she didn't just show me human love she showed me God's love God's grace his mercy she would just she would I, I would disappear for days at a time and she would find me she sought me down like that song said that she, he comes running after you she was showing what God's love is willing to do run after you when you are lost bring you peace and justice and and she was showing me all that through love, uh, Christ's love for us. Well, I didn't realize that at the time. I just thought she was crazy. Why is she kind of stalking me? Why is she doing this? It's because she cared enough to show me who Christ really was. 
See, that love, that kind of love that she was showing me, it can change the hardest of hearts and it can soften the hardest of hearts because of the power and the, the, because of what the power of love can do. And Jesus teach, teaches us and taught us that. That love on the cross is what we're supposed to give sacrificially, unselfishly to others, to our enemies, to our neighbors, to our children. See, John 3.16 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. See, this kind of love, it offers a taste of God's character. God is strong and he's tender, right? Our love is to be equal parts, strength and tenderness. Strength disarms false power. Tender, tenderness, it invites the heart to rest when it's defenseless. When we're kind and tender and speak softly to somebody, it brings down their defenses, doesn't it? But when I scream and yell at them, what does it do? It puts up walls, right? So strength disarms false power and tenderness invites the heart to rest and become defenseless. And that's what was happening with me. I didn't even realize it. Strength reveals that God is, is holy and he hates sin. But yet tenderness reveals God's grace and reconciliation for us. The goal of love, our bold love, is to give a taste of God. That's what we're supposed to do. See, bold love seeks reconciliation with all as far as it is possible for us to go. Meaning we are supposed to reconcile and show this love as much as we can and as far as we can go. Paul talks about becoming kind of a chameleon in, in <clears throat> about I've done this, I've done that. Why? So I could win souls. We are supposed to do whatever we can win souls for God. See, we're not always going to be at peace with somebody. I get that. Um, but if there's ever room uh, to move forward toward re reconciliation, we need to take that. If there's a crack in the door and the door is open just a little, we need to go in with reconciliation and we need to show them love. Why? Because that kind of love can change hearts. Not just our hearts, but other people's hearts. See, and, and the way to a changed heart, to a new heart, a new love, comes from belief in Jesus Christ. It says, whoever, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. See, uh, that love that God sent his son, it will never leave us. That love for us will never forsake us. It's because of the grace of God and the love that he has for us that he would send his one son, his only son, to redeem us from the evil one and to reconcile us with him once and for all. A gift that we don't deserve. You realize that, right? We don't deserve it, yet he still gives it to us freely. And when we accept this gift of salvation, this gift of love, because that's truly what it is. He's giving us a gift of love to say, I want you back in my life. And when, when, when we accept this gift, we can now love like God. And we can love selflessly. And we can, uh, like Jesus did. And we can live in freedom with the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us in love knowing that God will seek vengeance for us on our enemies. And all we need to do is to love like him. I'm going to close with this. And if, if you need that kind of love today, if you don't know that kind of love today, if you don't have the gift of salvation in your life, meaning you never said, Jesus, come into my heart. I, I, I need that love. I need that forgiveness. I want to have eternal life with you. I want the love that your father gave to the world. If you need that gift of love, 
so you can learn to love in a new way and you need to start a new life today awesome I'm gonna ask you to pray a prayer with me um, the prayer doesn't save you what what saves you is saying Lord I want to make you my Lord and Savior and if, if this is gonna be the first time you ever pray that prayer I want you to put in comments or message me personally I want to give you a book I want to give you next steps as a believer and if you pray this prayer a thousand times and you need to be able to walk with him more and, and you want this love in your life and you need next steps let me know I, I, I'm here to help you our church is here to help you okay but if today is the first day you accept this gift and you want to start a new walk in love with God today, God bless you. Let's pray this prayer and then we'll pray another prayer before we just uh, get offline, okay? And everybody repeat with me. Father God, thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your son Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for us. Lord, I accept Christ into my heart today. I know I am a sinner, and I am saved by your grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that the Holy Spirit guides me, leads me, and loves me for the rest of my life. Lord, teach me today how to love like you. Let me be a shining light in a world of darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Like you said, if that is the first time you prayed that prayer, God bless. I can call you brother and sister of the faith now. And um, we love you, and we care about you, and we want to help you. So... Before we go, though, I, I do have a special prayer. I don't know. The Lord's kind of just working on me. So just keep your heads bowed for real quick. Father God, I come. We come. The world, and we ask and, and we seek and, we, and we're looking for you, Father God. We need your love. We need this world needs this love. So I'm asking us, raise up this church, Father God. Raise up your church. Other churches, Father God, around the country, the states, the, the nations, the world, Father God. It says your word says every tribe shall hear the word, Lord. Let us stand in the gap and pray for our nations, for our government, for our people of this world, of all race, creeds, and colors, Father God, that we can find unity in your love, Father God. Knowing that we are all made differently, but we are under one mighty power. And that is the power of the love of God. That you are our maker and our creator. That you've made us all special and unique in your image, Father God. With each body parts that we have uh, being the body of Christ. That we all come differently, but we make one body. And we're under Christ's authority, Father God. Let us pray for the nations and the world and, and our churches and our people in it that we put you first again, Father God, not just in churches, but in our workplace, in our homes, in, in the stores that we shop, Father God, that we put you first in all we do. And as we go throughout the day, Father God, that we treat everyone as our neighbor and love them the way that you love us. You love us even when we're broken. You love us even when we are sinners. You love us even when we say we're going to give our lives to you. You love us all the time. Lord, let us show that love to a world that needs it right now. Through our actions, through our words, through our good deeds, Lord, let us be your hands and feet now. Let us change be able to be the change in this world, Father God. Your believers, your church, your family be the conduit to, to bring evil out. And how do we do that? Through your love. Let us be able to show that love. Let us be that love. Let us be able to destroy evil with that love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Hey guys, I love you all. Remember, B A B, B A blessing. So go be a blessing to somebody today. Love you. God bless. Have a great day.